Yeah, hi. I'm Stefan. Um, I'm leading the team for autonomous navigation here at IPA. I guess I don't need to introduce IPA at that point. Um, and I would like to talk about uh, plug and play navigation solutions. So here's my agenda. I would like to start with a short intro of what do we mean with uh, plug and play in this particular context, then um, presenting our IPA navigation stack with a focus on uh, its application to uh, transport robots at BMW and then also rating um, its um, uh, performance against these uh, plug and play criteria. And then my second part is about what we call node navigation on, on demand, which incorporates concepts of networking, cloud edge computing and machine learning into the particular field of uh, mobile robot navigation. So let's start. Uh, in, our in our opinion, plug and play navigation solutions are one of the key enablers to the widespread usage of mobile robots and HGVs in the industry. And uh, the key features that we find are, of course, reducing the commissioning and maintenance efforts to a minimum and also no need of experts here, but then also it's versatile usage in different applications, different platforms, different environmental conditions, and also inducing different navigation behaviors. And then last but not least, also, of course, open standardized interfaces. So most of these points, maybe not the last one, but most of them um, are dependent on high autonomy capabilities of the robots. So that's basically infrastructureless localization, so the ability to localize the robot um, um, with uh, only given the, the structure of the environment without any additional markers, and then also the ability to interact with the dynamic objects of the environment and with the changing environment characteristics. So let's see how good our navigation stack performs on these criteria. First of all, some facts about it. Um, we're not dependent on any markers, obviously. Um, it's mostly platform, hardware, and sensor independent. Of course, it's using RAS. And it basically has three core components. This is a long-term slam for continuous localization and mapping in changing environments and a SOM-based global route planner and a dynamic global path and trajectory optimization. Um, we also find some um, applications where it's already been successfully applied to. But I would like to go into detail a little bit more into the project with BMW of the smart transport robots, as they are, that's how they call it, those yellow transport robots. So, um, as BMW developed this transport robot by itself for internal usage for the intra logistics to have like a versatile transport robot um, for different applications. They actually plan to have several hundreds of these robots in each of their plans. And um, they approached us basically two years ago um, because they needed like a high autonomy navigation system. So basically what I just uh, defined, markerless infrastructureless localization and the dynamic path planning and collision avoidance. And the main challenges in, with respect to navigation here are, one, the sparse sensor data that we uh, only, that is only provided by the robot, so we only have 180 degree field of view with 2D safety laser scanners and wheel odometry. Then we have a, um, a variable environment, so there are hardly any static structures. You can see this in this Pictures, picture on the right that nearly all of these objects are movable and um, you don't get any clear structures from them. Then we have interactions with a lot of dynamic objects, so trucker trains, forklift trucks, persons, etc. We have large environments, so these large production halls, and uh, for this particular robot, a limited maneuverability with a variable footprint depending on its load and also the huge 
um, speed dependent safety fields. You will see that later. So, in these environments, you cannot just run a SLAM for generating an initial map and then just go with a standard localization system, but you need to continu continuously update it. And for this task, we have like our EPA long term SLAM, which is basically a particle filter based localization approach and then we put the major effort into the map representation so that it's able to um, accurately approximate the contours of the environment but also the dynamics of the environment handling uncertainty in the mapping process and uh, also uh, dealing with um, restricted computational resources. And I have a video for you. First of all, we generate the initial map using the standard SLAM. So this is Ross Cartographer, which does a pretty good job here in this environment, although the colleague from BMW really gives it a hard time by making the biggest loop possible um, in this environment. Maybe you saw this at the beginning of the video. So really challenging its loop closure um, capabilities. And yeah, here again, this is the loop. We can then, without any manual modifications, we can directly input this into our long-term SLAM, which is then directly able to localize the robot. We see it here in the visualization in Arvis in an initialization phase. Um, and after it has converged to a proper localization, then it's able to also update um, the map with the observed um, uh, changes of the environment. So we see this visualized as those highlighted cells. So these are the, the altered cells that um, are mapped given the initial map during this run here. So, here's another slide on uh, motivating this approach. This is the initial map and also its dimensions. Um, and this is how it looked like after two months operation. And in blue, we have the cells that have changed to free and in red, the cells that have changed to red. And this is the situation after four months. So you really see that with like an approach on a static um, map, you would not be able to, to fulfill this task. Um, I'm skipping the global route planner because I think it's comparable to other approaches. If you, if you want to know more about it, please um, uh, contact me afterwards and come to our dynamic path optimization and obstacle avoidance. Um, here we are using one, an elastic band approach um, for adjusting the uh, global path to dynamic obstacles. And then uh, we have put a lot of effort into the path following control to be able to handle those safety fields. Uh, here they are visualized um, with those red polygons. Um, so um, there is one in front of uh, the robot. This is like the actual safety field that we are currently have um, with the given twist and then we are projecting two further safety fields um, uh, in order to evaluate if um, we can safely um, drive with this twist. Also here in the Alvis visualization we see what kind of dynamics or dynamic obstacles we are facing and um, how, how the, the local path planner is challenged by these. Also, you see these safety fields adjusting depending on the velocity. And it's reaching its goal here. Okay, so um, what are the potentials and limitations of this single robot navigation stack? On the potential side, we find 
that we have successfully proven that it's uh, versatile applicable, uh, it's versatile applicability um, to different vehicles, different applications from cleaning robots to heavy um, goods vehicles. Also, we have sh demonstrated um, several times that we can really reduce commissioning time. So uh, typically, we need approximately one day for setting up a new robot type if it's ROS enabled, and then uh, two to three hours depending on the dimensions of the environment uh, for new environments. Then the particular application on the SCR shows that although we really have like a complex industrial environment, uh, we can generate these long-term autonomy capabilities um, and, and really provide like a, a robust and efficient navigation system. Then are, there are some low-hanging fruits kind of um, which can enhance the systems easily. So in this particular project by enhancing the field of view with more sensor data so that the planner and also the localization system um, has more data to, to evaluate um, and um, to, to process. And then also, since we currently only have the 2D laser scans, we're not really able to detect and classify dynamic objects. But um, if you add like standard camera or point cloud sensors and uh, respective libraries, we would also be able to um, enhance the navigation behavior when interacting with dynamic obstacles. But then on the limitation side, um, we have several points and it can basically um, broken down to one major limitation, which is that we only have like a restricted field of view and thereby restricted sensor information, information about um, the environment. So the result is that the robustness and accuracy of the localization system decreases in highly changing areas. Also, since we are not having like a direct communication with dynamic objects, this could lead to inefficiencies up to mutual deadlocks. And also, uh, with this restricted field of view, we cannot really induce like a, a, a predictive navigation behavior. So that's um, why um, we introduced Node Navigation on Demand, um, which tries to resolve these issues by um, employing concepts from networking, cooperation, cloud edge computing, and machine learning. So the basic idea is to resolve these local limitations through networking, through sharing information, and then building holistic environment models and state models based on these uh, rich information, outsourcing computational intensive processes to cloud edge servers, so thereby keep the robots themselves kind of lean, and um, also then um, being um, able to um, do real cooperation and orchestration of these also heterogeneous fleets. And last but not least, um, uh, the um, experience learn learning-based approaches to have it more self-configurable, self-optimizing system and reduce the, the manual um, uh, efforts here. So we already see some um, lab demonstrators here, so we have like a cooperative mapping system, a mutual localization system already demonstrated, a cooperative local path planning system which also um, runs with virtual robots, so like a hybrid uh, um, uh, demonstration of, of real and simulated robots and then also a cooperative global path planner which is simulated with using this AR um, visualization. And I now want to shed a light on two recent um, research activities of my team which focus on learning-based approaches and uh, this is the first one which tries to tackle the local path planning and optimization prob problem using um, reinforcement, deep reinforcement learning, deep Q learning. So the idea is um, that it's really hard and takes a lot of effort to manually configure and test 
the desired navigation pay, uh, behavior, um, especially here for, for the local path planning behavior. So this could be learned. And um, I think easiest is to demonstrate it um, via this nice video that the colleague did. So this is the um, data that is input into the net. So that we have the laser scan, then the global path, and also the safety fields. And now it starts to, without any prior knowledge, to train itself. And maybe you know those um, DeepMind videos where the system tries to learn these uh, Atari games. Looks kind of similar. So after millions of training steps, it does pretty fine. And we are also able here to train those um, uh, multiple times simultaneously and evaluate them in, in the same environment. So here we see, um, without any cooperation, um, that um, they already show like a good cooperation behavior. They kind of, for some reason, learned like a left-handed um, traffic. Uh, um, and there are still some problems with it, but still seems quite promising. As I said, there is there's no uh, cooperation at that point. Each agent kind of um, optimizes uh, on its own. And in that regard, it's pretty amazing what the output is. And um, then we have like a, another approach which tackles the optimized global routing. So, here, the problem is that in those large-scale areas, it's pretty computational intensive to do a um, geometric and kinematic um, path planning, global path planning. Um, and also, um, that those rigid models that are um, normally applied in those uh, approaches only partly fit to the actual uh, behavior on, in this environment. So uh, the idea is to first offline generate a root graph using a growing neural gas approach and then learn the costs or the real um, uh, intersection times based on the live operation. And I also have a video um, of this approach here. So first of all, we generate this initial roadmap just using the occupancy grid map that we generated by the, um, the SLAM approach that we saw previously. And this is done offline um, by simulating the robot driving through this environment so that we have like an initial guess um, and we can now feed this with like real data to see how it actually performs on those on this graph, and then also use, of course, information from multiple robots here in a simulated environment. And finally, we also did this in our lab with at least three robots um, to to see that it's also working with with real data. Okay, that's it. Thanks for your attention. So, first question is, uh, are you using any of the original ROS navigation stack here, or is this a from the ground up completely new thing? Um, we used to use uh, just the move space framework, mm -hmm. but we... Um, migrated to the move based flex to be more flexible, but we plan to use the, the new stack with the behavior trees, um, but it's... Um okay, good, let's talk. Yeah. <laughs> um, yeah, my second question was about the, uh, the map updating. You were talking about the dynamic map updating. So are you saving that back to the static map file every time, or, or, or is that just like uh, 
occupancy layer of a cost map or something that, that you're it's, just... It's an internal format. It's not... Um, so we, we take as an input, we take the occupancy grid map from, from, from some SLAM um, approach, and then we build our own internal map representation. I, I can discuss with you the details okay. uh, afterwards. But, but you, basically you are, you are storing it from day to day so that each yeah, day the robot yeah. starts with it. Like and we, we have it on, on, okay. on different layers in a, in, uh, to be able to incorporate this in uncertainty of the mapping process and uh, to, to minimize yeah. um, the danger of um, including a runner's mapping data uh, irreversible in the, in the map. Okay, thank you.